Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Bitwarden Brilliance. I'm your host today, Tony, the lead integration engineer here on the Bitwarden team, and I'm happy to announce the return of Bitwarden Brilliance. We have a lot of exciting t topics planned for the coming months, and for those new to the stream, Bitwarden Brilliance is a deep dive into a core technical component of Bitwarden that will be returning to run at a recurring monthly interval. So for today's Bitward and Brilliance, we are going to be focusing on SSO with trusted devices. This feature removes the previous requirement for users having to have an account password when using login with SSO to sign into the Bitwarden account. This achieves a more traditional passwordless SSO workflow without compromising security standards. We're going to be reviewing how to implement this function, how the security behind this feature works, and address any questions that may come up during the session. So for our agenda, again, a brief overview of Bitwarden. We'll be talking about SSO with trusted devices. We'll get into a live demo of configuring SSO with trusted devices, go over some workflows that that entails, and address any questions and answers that may come up on the uh, feed today. So as you probably all know, Bitwarden is a secure end-to-end zero-knowledge solution. We are com customer and community-centric transparent in all that we do and synchronized across all of your devices, whether it be the CLI, Web Vault, browser extension, desktop app, mobile app. We're available offline as well, so we're available wherever you are, whenever you need us. SSO with trusted devices is a secure solution that can fit your enterprise's needs with a multitude of both security and convenience benefits, including allowing users to log in with SSO and decrypt their vault using a device stored encryption key. This eliminates the need to have a master password. Trusted devices must be registered in advance of the login attempt or approved through a few different methods that we will cover on the demo today. Users are going to benefit from all the security features from SSO while removing the need to have that master password to get the more traditional SSO one-click login flow. And this brings us the question, how does SSO with trusted devices function and how does this add security to your organization? So we'll talk a little bit about how the encryption behind this works behind the scenes before we delve into a demo showing the theory in practice. Just for a little bit of housekeeping, a preceding requirement is having account recovery enabled. Account recovery allows your administrators to reset a user's master password um, if they happen to forget that. This is enabled through an account policy, and we can cover that during the course of the demo today. So just to go over the graph here, when a user joins the organization, an account recovery key is created by encrypting their account encryption key with the organization's public key. Account recovery is required to enable SSO with trusted devices as mentioned earlier. So when a user is asked whether they want to remember or trust the device, when they opt to do so, a device key is generated by the client. This key never leaves the client. A new RSA key pair, device private key, and device public key gets generated by the client. The user's account encryption key is encrypted with the unencrypted device public key, and the resultant value is sent to the server as the device public key encrypted user key. This device key is encrypted with the account uh, the account encryption key and the resultant value sent to the server as the user key encrypted public key. The device private key is encrypted with the device key and the resultant value is sent to the server as the device key encrypted private key. The public key encrypted user key and device key encrypted private key will crucially be sent from server to client as the login session is initiated. The user key encrypted public key will be used and should the user need to rotate their account, uh, their account encryption key. So when a user authenticates with SSO on an already trusted device, the user's public key encrypted uh, user key, which is an encrypted version of the account encryption key used to decrypt the vault data, gets sent from the server to the client. 
the user's device encrypted private key, which is the unencrypted version, is required to decrypt the public key encrypted user key, which is sent from the server to the client. The client decrypts the public key encrypted private key using the device key, which never leaves the client. The now unencrypted device private key is used to decrypt the public encrypted user key resulting in the account's encryption key. Finally, the user account's encryption key will decrypt the vault data. So for setting the stage for this demo that we're about to delve into, a user's first device is automatically trusted. When a device request is approved, the requesting user is sent an email informing them that they can log in on that device. The user must take action on logging into that device within 12 hours or that uh, approval will expire. Unapproved requests will expire after one week. You can deny an attempt by instead selecting deny request or denying all requests in the UI. Alternatively, you can approve all of the requests to approve a device inside of the UI. Events for this will be logged when a user's device is approved, when a user requests device approval, or when a device request is denied. We're going to be going ahead and covering SSO with trusted devices, adding a trusted device, and approving a device in this demo today. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's go ahead and get into configuring uh, trusted devices for passwordless SSO. I'm going to go ahead and sign into my account here and navigate to the admin console. Turning on trusted devices for SSO is as easy as coming to the settings as an admin user, going to single sign-on, and ensuring that your member decryption option is set to trusted devices instead of master passwords. This is going to achieve that traditional passwordless SSO approach by adding that encryption key locally on the user's device. You'll want to make sure that you have an active SSO configuration with either SAML or OIDC and go ahead and save this. Now, just to briefly cover policies that should be enabled prior to rolling this out, you're going to want to make sure you have require single sign-on authentication enabled, single organization enabled, and account recovery administration enabled. These are the minimum policies that you should have defined, but of course work with your team to decide how you should scale those out or feel free to uh, loop us in if you have any questions on best practices for these policies for your organization. Devices pending approval are going to be logged here in the device approvals pane. So now we're going to cover onboarding users in a variety of different ways. The first way that we're going to cover is going to be adding the user to the user group that's applied to this on your IDP. In my case, we're using Jump Cloud, so I'll open up this Nancy Drew user, and I'll go ahead and apply them to these three groups here. This is going to generate an email invitation for the user and it's going to also apply those groups to that user granting any collection access that existing collections may have access to. So we'll come into my email here and I uh, don't quite have the email just yet. Sometimes it takes a few minutes to come from the IDP. So it's a good point to go over. You can see here I have no groups currently in this organization. I currently have one user that's now entered the invited status, and I have a number of collections stored here in this org. So you can see we have this email to join the enterprise organization. We'll go ahead and join organization now. It's going to take us right to SSO and ask the user to sign in with SSO. Continue that SSO login. We'll get redirected to Bitwarden. And since this is the first device that the user is signing in with, it will be automatically trusted. So we'll go ahead and continue. And that account has been confirmed to the organization. We'll come back into 
our membership pane of the admin console and we see that Nancy Drew user has moved from invited to needs confirmation so now we can confirm this user so since the user's first device is automatically trusted um, and they do not already have an account yet this user does need to be confirmed to the organization now all subsequent devices that this user signs into are going to be needed to have approval from an organization owner or admin so we're just going to come on over to an incognito session and sign in with the Nancy Drew user. Go to Enterprise Single Sign-On and enter our SSO identifier. SSO identifiers can be bypassed by adding a DNS text record to your local host. conduct the SSO login and now we will be requesting our administrator approval so if I click request approval we'll notice coming back into our admin console going to device approvals that Nancy Drew user is pending in approval so I can go ahead and approve that request and now that Nancy Drew user could use that device in addition to their already approved device which would have been the web vault inside of the Opera browser now we'll look at adding a user just with a, <clears throat> excuse me, just with uh, just-in-time provisioning. So we'll open up a new Chrome window, get an incognito tab, head over to Vault. Now I have another user that I'm going to go ahead and apply here. Go to Enterprise Single Sign-On. And go ahead and sign into that account. We'll be redirected to Jump Cloud. So I haven't been assigned access to this application. That's just because I haven't added this JBond user uh, to that specific group. So I'll just go ahead and do that. Now, if we come back to that web vault that we previously had up, just reload, trigger the sign in process again. And now we'll notice that the device was approved since it's the first device that that user is signing in with. We'll just go ahead and hit continue. And then when we come back to our web vault under the administrator view and come into our membership pane, we should see that that James Bond user is also now pending confirmation. So we can go ahead and confirm them. And just like with the other user, they would be able to have subsequent devices requesting approval. All right, and for the final thing that we're going to be showcasing today, it will be self-approved logins with the desktop application. Now I'm already signed into the desktop app and I've had this login approved. We're going to open up a new incognito window here, navigate over to the web vault, and sign in as the JBond user. trigger the enterprise SSO sign in and then you'll notice we are given an option to request an admin approval or approve from another device if we approve from another device, it's going to bring up this banner on the desktop application. It'll show you the fingerprint phrase, the device type, IP address, and log the time. And I could approve or deny that login. So I'll go ahead and approve it. Now that device is trusted and that login is approved, so I'm free to access the organization here. We do log events for 
trusted devices whenever a user requests a device approval, whenever a device request is approved, and whenever a device request is denied. So that's been trusted devices with Bitwarden. It's a great way to achieve that more traditional password less SSO login flow without compromising security or convenience. Uh, happy to address any questions in the chat today. And as always, thank you for tuning in to Bitwarden Brilliance. We will see you next month and we're very excited for what we have coming next. Mm -hmm.